We chatted with uh, Jill Duffy earlier this week about password protection, namely focusing then on using password managers for protection. One thing we briefly touched on is two-factor authentication, and I will fully admit I'm very new to two-factor. <laughs> uh, Father Robert, I'm I'm guessing that you're a little more familiar with two-factor yes. than I am at this point. In light of these incidents that are happening so regularly, it almost seems like two-factor is necessary, right? We've been saying two-factor is necessary for years and years and years, mm -hmm. uh, but people haven't been using it. And the reason right. why, it's very simple. It comes down to convenience. Two-factor authentication, when it works well, is fantastic. But when it doesn't work, it is an absolute nightmare, uh, especially if, if it's for a resource that you need to get access to. So, for example... Um, I use a three- or four-factor authentication to protect the infrastructure that I, I control. So my switches, my servers, I have multiple pieces of information that I have to give it. And, and some of them are pieces that I remember. Some of them are pieces that I, I am, so my biometric information. Mm -hmm. And then I've got what uh, people would consider like a little dongle that gives me a, 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 a rotating based on algorithmic number that I have to input. <laughs> And then there's my phone. So anytime I try to log in, my phone will get a message that uh, that gives me a bit of inform information I have to add in. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I don't have service for my phone, suddenly I can't get in. And that's actually the the uh, annoyance that a lot of people are running into. When they enable two-factor authentication, at the first time they do it, it, it sounds, okay, this is something I can do. But every time when it requires a bit more thought and a bit more activity, it just doesn't become worth it. I had two-factor turned on on um, on my Google accounts, and I actually turned it off because it got so difficult to do work. And <clears throat> when you're saying that it's it's difficult to do work, like on your mobile phone, you log into an account and you're logged in. Right. Period. Mm -hmm. So you aren't getting that prompt every single time you're trying to no, but go you, into your email. You should. But. So like on my desktop, uh, it should ask me for my credentials every time I come in. That's the correct way to do it. It should not be persistent <laughs> because then what you've done is you've created an environment created where whole. if I leave my desktop unlocked and my desktop has access to all the resources that I'm, I'm already connected to, I've just created a gaping security hole. Right. You shouldn't do that. It should be every time you log into a service, you should have to enter in some sort of two-factor authentication. But none of us, none of us would be willing to do that. Can you imagine going from Facebook to Twitter to your banking to... Oh, and every no. single time getting a nope. code. I mean, I Won't think that's it. that's the thing that kind of frightens me about it is, am I putting literally a speed bump into my access, my accessing all the apps that I use multiple times throughout the day? So you're talking every single time you would go into the Facebook app, for example... I would, uh, in order for me to check out my feed, I would have to wait for a, a, a code to be sent to me to be able to authenticate with and then get in and check things right. out. Right, and, and there's actually a point of negative returns. Yeah. So, for example, if I know that every time I open up a browser, I'm going to have to re-enter my credentials, I just never close the browser. I always have it right. there, and I tell it, don't time out. Well, suddenly that's a huge security that's issue that's on the yeah. desktop. So it, it's not as simple as, well, turn it on. It, it becomes... What is the most you as a user are willing to tolerate in terms of inconvenience to have a more secure experience? And unfortunately, right now, most of us are saying not at all. I don't want to be inconvenienced at all. Can you put a time on it? I know with LastPass, you can set it up so that, you know, you enter in your master account. This is less of an issue now that, that you've got fingerprint, you know, reader on your phone. Like before fingerprint reader, I felt like I was entering my LastPass password like 20 or 30 times a day for different things. Uh, there is an option in there where you can say once, you know, the master password is entered, uh, keep keep the gate open for 15 minutes, let's say. Not the whole day, not forever, but just for the next 15 minutes because I'm actively using it. And yes, that's an open door. That's a vector. But it's not as open as just like leaving it completely unprotected. So you end up you know, being protected a lot beyond that. Do you have that with two-factor? I, I, yeah, I mean, there's most two-factors have a way to set it up so mm -hmm. that it's, it's a bit easier for you. But you get to that point where, uh, like that little button, remember me when I log in from this computer, most of us are going to check that because yeah. it's, it's easier than trying to remember a username and password. So now I have it set for don't time out for 15 minutes. Okay, well, you know what? I actually need 30 minutes. Oh, it doesn't do 30 minutes? Well, let's just turn it off. That's the, <laughs> right. that's the conversation that people have with themselves. Yeah. And so you know, it's incumbent upon security professionals to find that sweet spot. There must be a sweet spot where people are willing to be inconvenienced because it makes not just them more secure, but imagine all the resources you're connected to. So if I leave, like, my master box unprotected, 
there, there are literally like five universities and six high schools that have a breach, a breach in progress. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of people out there who work in technology who have the same thing. They have access to corporate resources that really should not ever, ever be unprotected. Um, so, again, how willing are you to go through that? <laughs> me? You pointed at me. What? <laughs> what am I doing? Why are you calling me out? No, it's true. I need to do this. I mean, two-factor authentication, Facebook, Gmail, Twitter, yep. LinkedIn, yep. Amazon, a large list of banking sites, which is pretty darn important. They all have it. All I the major like, ones have a way to turn it on. Yeah, I feel like I need to, I, I hate that I have to do this for myself in order to do it, but I feel like I need to give myself a challenge. Turn on two-factor and all these things and live my life with it for a couple of weeks just to see what my what my level of tolerance is for this and the impact that it has uh, on accessing my device. You know? The tip that I've given to people who are very reticent to do this is... All of the sites that you don't check regularly but are important, like banking, your, so your banking statements, yeah, your credit cards, one. even mm -hmm. things like LinkedIn, which you don't log in a lot, but when you do, it's got a lot of connections. Those should all have two-factor authentication, and they should have passwords that are different from everything, too. For sure. Just, you know, standard security. For the sites that I'm going to be visiting on a minute basis, if, you know, not, you know, if not second basis, mm -hmm. um, like Twitter, like Facebook, like Google+, uh, you can get away with a little less protection because you're going to be logged in so often that you will very quickly notice if someone else is in the game. Sure. Um, so th that I will I will allow to be a little more open. But anything that has to do with a, a secured site that has the ability to really mess up my life, uh, I can't use convenience as an excuse not to engage two or three-factor authentication. Mm-hmm.